What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna show you a sumo good morning, which is one of the most underrated exercises for building a stronger deadlift, blowing your glutes and your hamstrings up, and overall full body strength compound movement. Fair warning, it's gonna make you super sore for the next couple days, but very much worth it. If you have any questions, let me know. Like the video, subscribe if you don't already. Let's get into it. So when you're doing a normal good morning, your stance is gonna be right about shoulder width apart and your feet slightly turned outwards. Basically, it's your conventional deadlift stance. The sumo good morning, obviously, it's basically your sumo deadlift stance. So you're gonna get your feet slightly wider. How wide, it really depends on how wide you wanna go. Personally, I try and mimic my sumo deadlift stance. So if you are an ultra wide sumo deadlifter, try getting your feet ultra wide. If you take more of a moderate stance for your sumo deadlift, take more of a moderate stance. Either way, do what feels best for you. Try a bunch of different ones and make sure you're not going so wide that you're putting too much pressure on your hips. Also, make sure that your toes are in line with your knees. One of the mistakes people make is when their toes come in and then their knees are coming out and then it puts a little bit too much torque on your knees. So what, however wide you go, just make sure your big toe is in line with your knees and that's a good stance to begin with. When you're doing the good morning, what I want you to really pay attention to is where you're driving through in your foot. And basically one thing I try and do is I always just try and make sure that I have a little bit of space between my big toe and the ground. You don't wanna pick it up like this because that's gonna throw you off balance, but having, make, sort of thinking about how there's a sharp tack on the floor underneath your big toe will prevent you from putting too much pressure on it because the last thing you want is your heel coming off the ground. You do not want that. You want your heel flat on the floor and slightly just keeping your big toe slightly on the ground, imagining that you didn't wanna just push through a sharp tack there. And that way you're gonna keep your weight centered through your heel to your midfoot, And that's where you're gonna get the most hamstring activation and you're gonna get the best hip hinge. When you're setting your grip, you actually do not want a really close grip because if you get too close, it requires a lot of shoulder mobility. It's very, very challenging. And that can actually inhibit your hip mobility. So what I want you to do is get a very wide grip, not so wide that you're really close to the clips because when you're re-racking the weight, you could pinch your hand, but get a relatively wide grip so you have more room to get under the bar. And then from there, now you can get underneath the bar and get a relatively low bar position. This does still require a lot of shoulder mobility. And if that's an issue for you, keep in mind, you don't have to have your whole hand around the bar. In fact, for me personally, I actually like to get a very light grip. So either three or even sometimes two fingers, they call this the Jersey claw. So you could have two fingers or three fingers just to make it easier on your shoulders. Wide grip, come underneath, getting a low bar position. And this is how you're going to start the good morning. So real quick, one more note before you unrack the bar. I want you to pay attention to where the bar is in relation to the hook. Because a lot of people, what they'll do is, the bar will be out here, and then it might roll back and forth as they're trying to lift it off. What I want you to do is push the bar up against the rack and make sure that's where you're starting it from. Because if you're actively pushing against it, it won't be rolling back and forth. From here, now we have to set it on your back. And I want you to take a relatively low bar position. And to show you what that looks like, a higher bar position would be up on the top of your traps like this, while a lower bar position gets it a little bit lower on your back, more towards the mid part of your back, and you keep it there by squeezing your shoulder blades together. So again, a higher bar position is more of an upright torso, where it just rests on your traps, and a lower bar position is where you get it lower on your back and you squeeze your shoulder blades together in order to keep it there and the more mid part of your back. One of the biggest issues people have with this, once they unrack the bar, 
is they feel like the bar is just gonna fall right off. The way to prevent that is number one, squeezing your shoulder blades together. You don't want them loose like this. You want your elbows up a little bit and squeezing it together. Number two is you actually wanna pull your, the bar into your back. Not so hard, you wanna be ripping it down, but lightly create pressure pulling into your back. And number three is lean slightly forward. If you look from the side view, you're gonna see that I'm leaning slightly forward, which prevents the bar from falling down. If I'm standing straight up, it lets the bar come straight down my back and that's when you run into issues. The main reason you don't want a high bar position while you're doing this sumo good morning is because as you're going back with your hips, the bar is gonna roll forward onto your neck, your cervical spine, which obviously is not what we want. So you want that lower bar position and you wanna be pulling it into you so that you can, number one, not let the bar roll up and number two, keep it secured in your mid, mid upper back the entire time. Again, you don't need to be pulling so hard that it's hurting your hands or hurting your shoulders, but light tension pulling down with your fingers is enough to prevent the bar from rolling and keep it in place where you want it throughout the entire set. So probably the biggest mistake that people make when they're unracking the bar is they come from too far back, like they're doing the good morning out of the rack, which is super dangerous and is not really efficient where they try and unrack the bar like this. And what you wanna do is you wanna get that lower bar position like I showed you, and you wanna get directly underneath the bar like you're gonna be squatting, okay? So directly underneath the bar, stand up strong, and then instead of doing a bunch of little steps like this, which is just a waste of energy, you wanna stand up strong, one step, two step, find your position, and then go into the good morning. That's a much more efficient and safer way to unrack the bar. So now for the actual technique, under the bar, strong stand up, one step, two step, in your position, feet wider than shoulder width, toes pointing out in line with your knees. From here, your first move is your butt back to the wall behind you. The biggest mistake people will make is breaking at the knees first, essentially doing a squat instead of a good morning. When you're doing a good morning, you wanna send your butt back to the wall behind you and basically imagine that you're doing a deadlift. The good morning is really a deadlift with the bar on your back or maybe even more like a Romanian deadlift because your knees are only slightly bending. So again, sending your butt back to the wall behind you and you want your torso to be as close to parallel as possible with the ground before returning to the starting position. So probably major mistake, too much knee bend, squatting the good morning. Second major mistake is slightly, is reducing the range of motion and not going deep enough. So you don't wanna squat it and you don't wanna short the range. You wanna make sure your butt goes all the way back, big stretch in the hamstrings, torso almost parallel with the floor, drive to the heels, squeeze your butt, and that is the good morning. Just for safety's sake, when you're finishing the good morning, when you walk it in to re-rack the bar, don't try and find the pins like this. A squat rack is strong and stable, or it should be, so just literally take the bar, walk it in until you hear the pins, then drop it. Now, if you're gonna add this into your workout program, obviously you're gonna want it on lower body days, but generally speaking, save it for the first or second main move of your lower body days. You don't wanna do this too late in the workout when you're already fatigued. It's just, it's a very technical drill and there's no reason to save it for that late. So first or second exercise of the day, anywhere between three to five sets of five to probably 12 repetitions is the higher end range. Just no need for more than that. Anywhere between three to five sets, five to 12 reps per set is plenty. It's gonna blow your hamstrings up, blow your glutes up, and your erectors are gonna be on fire. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you don't subscribe, please do. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't like the video, you don't need to hit the like button. Hit the bell if you wanna be notified when the next video comes out. Thank you so much, sincerely appreciate you. Talk to you soon.